Hey guys, it's Kay, and this is the fifth time I filmed this intro. If you're new here, hi, welcome. We discuss true crime cases while doing our makeup. And it, I try, I try my best to post once or twice a week. Uh, lately life has been getting the better of me, but if that is something that interests you, I would love to have you join us. So, and if you have any cases that you wanna see discussed, feel free to leave those down below. Anyway, today, we are finally getting through that part. Today, we are gonna be doing the mysterious death of Eliza Lamb. I think all of these, like, signs should be cue to myself that maybe today is not the day to be filming this, but I digress. I'm sure if you have been online in the past few years, you have heard of the case of Elisa Lamb. However, it is one that never fails to baffle me, so I figured why not cover it. So this is a case with a lot of media coverage. I will not be showing the video that's associated with the case, but if you want to see it, it should be relatively easy to find. In mid-2010, Eliza began a blog. For two years, she would post pictures of models in fashionable clothing and accounts of what was going on in her life, including her struggles with mental illness. A little after two years after she, a little after two years after, yes, she had started the, so about two years after she started blogging, she announced that she would be abandoning her blog for Tumblr. The content mostly remained the same when she moved over to Tumblr though. She was diagnosed bipolar disorder as well as depression and was prescribed several medications to help her with those. However, she had a history of not taking her medications and this would cause her to suffer from hallucinations that would often cause her to hide under the bed. She took an Amtrak trip to California and had visited the San Diego Zoo, which she would post photos of on social media. On January 26th, she arrived in Los Angeles and after two days would check into the Cecil Hotel near downtown Skid Row. She was initially put in a shared room on the fifth floor, but her roommates kept complaining about her odd behavior. So she was moved to a room of her own after two days. Eliza had been leaving notes for her roommates that said, go home and go away and would lock the door and require a password for entry. A few days before her disappearance, she attended a live taping of Conan in Burbank, but was escorted off the premises by security due to disruptive behavior. While traveling, she contacted her parents daily up until the day she disappeared. On January 31st, 2013, the day she was scheduled to check out of the Cecil Hotel, her parents had not heard from her and called the LA Police Department. They would fly to Los Angeles to help with the search. Hotel staff who saw Eliza that day recalled that she'd been alone. Police searched the hotel as much as they could. They even had dogs go through the building and the rooftop and searched her room and found nothing. On February 6th, police decided they needed more help and flyers were posted around the neighborhood and online. After another week with no sign of Eliza, on February 13th, police released a video of the last known sighting of her in one of the Cecil Hotel's elevators taken on January 31st. Now that is the video that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I will not be showing, but it does show her, she gets into the elevator and then she kind of presses some buttons and then she like peeks out and looks around down the hallway and then goes back in like she's almost hiding from something and then she peeks out again. Out of respect for her and the family, it is not something that I want to show. The video was about two and a half minutes long and Eliza was seen alone making unusual moves and gestures. She presses every button on the elevator, peers into the hallway, then leaves the elevator at one point when the doors were open. She returns to the elevator, but the doors did not close, so she left again. This video drew worldwide attention due to her strange behavior and the fact that she had just gone missing. Several theories were named to explain her behavior. One of which was that she was trying to get the elevator to move to escape someone who was chasing her. Another was that she was under the influence and it was also thought she might have been experiencing a psychotic episode. 
Some even argued that the video had been tampered with to protect someone else who was in the video. While they were searching for Eliza, guests began to complain of low water pressure. Some even claimed that it was colored black or brown and tasted weird. On the morning of February 19th, Santiago Lopez, a hotel maintenance worker, found her body in one of the 4,000 gallon water tanks on the roof. Which of course then just sparked another mystery of how did she get to the roof? How did she get up there? And then inside this water tank. He found her by, he was going to investigate the claims on the water and looked through the open hatch and saw her laying face up in the water. The tank would be drained and cut open since the hatch was too small to get the equipment in to remove her body. On February 21st, the Los Angeles coroner's office stated that it was an accidental drowning with bipolar disorder as a significant factor. Her watch and room key were also found with her. Her body was moderately decomposed and bloated. However, there was no evidence of physical trauma. They did note that the amount of prescription drugs in her system indicated that she had stopped taking her medication shortly before her death. While the investigation gave a cause of death, it didn't explain how she got into the water tank. Doors and stairs that have roof access in the hotel are all locked. Only the staff have keys to them. If they were opened, it would also trigger an alarm. So there's, it's really a, a big mystery how she got up there. She could have used the fire escape to reach it, but her scent was lost by the dogs near a window that con that connected to the fire escape. However, a video released shortly after did show how the roof was easily accessible by fire escape and that two of the lids to the water tanks were open. Another issue in this case was that the tanks were four by eight foot cylinders and there wasn't an easy access point to them. They also had really heavy lids. The hotel maintenance worker who found her did state that the lid was open when he found her. Her phone was not found with her or in her hotel room, but her blog was updated after her death. Police weren't sure whether this post was scheduled or someone had access to her account to be able to post it. In September 2013, her parents filed a wrongful death lawsuit claiming the hotel failed to inspect and seek out hazards in the hotel that presented an unreasonable risk of danger to Eliza and other guests. They were seeking damages and burial costs. The hotel argued that they couldn't have predicted that Eliza would enter the water tanks, and since it was unknown how she got into the tank, no liability could be assigned for failing to prevent it. The lawsuit was dismissed in 2015, and that was the last that I could find about the case. Uh, I did just come across a video shortly before I sat down to film this that there's some new theories about how she got into the tanks. So if you guys come up with, if you guys like watch any other videos or find any other information on this case, please feel free to let me know. It is one that has kind of baffled me uh, since it happened because I don't understand how A, the hotel isn't liable for her death and B, that you can go undetected and get to the roof and into an eight foot water tank without any staff being alerted or any cameras, you know, picturing this, picking it up. Uh, otherwise, that is gonna do it for our case on Eliza Lamb. And if you guys have any other cases, cases that you want to see, please let me know down below and feel free to subscribe so that you don't miss any future content.